Good day. My name is Malabu Makunyani and welcome to my Excel presentation series titled A Researcher's Basic Guide to Microsoft Excel. This presentation is based on Office 365 and Microsoft 2016 for Windows. For those using different versions, please note that there might be slight differences, but they should still follow the same principles and concepts. Also, this presentation targets those with limited to no knowledge of Microsoft Excel. I divided the presentation series into three parts. So to keep them short and also to make it convenient for you so that you can only navigate to the part of the presentation series that you need the most or that you are interested in. The first part of the presentation titled Microsoft Excel Talk will give a basic overview of Microsoft Excel, explaining where to locate some of the basic tools and further explaining some of the frequently used terms. The second part will be focusing on data analysis using Microsoft Excel built-in functions and also creating your custom functions. The final part of the presentation will be on data visualization using Microsoft Excel. If this is your first time using Microsoft Excel or if you need a refresher course of Microsoft Excel, I recommend that you continue watching this part of the video as it forms part of the first series Otherwise, be on the lookout for other parts of the presentation series. At the end of this presentation, I expect one to be able to navigate through Microsoft Excel with ease, know what a spreadsheet is, and be able to create and use Microsoft Excel workbooks, be able to customize Microsoft Excel ribbons, and also be able to locate and use the pre-designed templates. Microsoft Excel is a spreadsheet program included in the Microsoft Office suite of applications. When you open Microsoft Excel blank workbook, this is what you will see. It is called a spreadsheet. The spreadsheet in Excel is divided into three sections. Firstly, across the top where the cursor is moving, that is called the tab bar. In the current spreadsheet, there are about nine tabs, namely Home, Insert, Draw, Page Layout, Formula, Data, and so on. Also note that the tab bar in Microsoft Excel is similar to that of Microsoft Word. The only difference is in Excel, we have the formula tab and the data tab. Below the data tab, we have what is known as the formula bar. A formula bar is where all the functions and formulas that you type in the work area will be displayed. This will make more sense when we start uh, populating the spreadsheet. Below the formula bar, we have what is known as the work area or the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet, the work area is divided into columns and rows. The columns are labeled alphabetically and the rows are labeled numerically, or rather they are numbered numerically. Where a column, where a column and a row intersect, it's called a cell. For example, where, my, where I put the cursor, it's called cell A1. And if I type a random number, let's say 12, this number will now appear in the formula bar. Also, also note that you can have more than one sheet open in Microsoft Excel. For example, in the current sheet, in the current spreadsheet, we have sheet one and sheet two open. And if you want to add a new sheet, you'll just click on the on the plus sign. On the on the plus sign. Also, 
you can rename your sheet. For example, if the sheet one, for example, if sheet one contains the data that you'll be using, the raw data that you'll be using for your analysis, you can rename the sheet by right clicking and navigating to the rename command. And you just type the new name of your sheet, for example, data. And you can do the same for sheet two, right click and navigate to rename command and if, for example, this is the sheet that you'll be using to draw your pie chart, you can just rename it pie, pie chart. Also, one last thing to note with a spreadsheet is that if you have multiple sheets in one spreadsheet, it is now referred as a workbook. We have now covered the basic terminology of Spreadsheet and Microsoft Excel. We will now move to the next slide where I will be explaining the ribbon in detail. As I previously mentioned, the ribbon is located at the top of a worksheet below a quick access bar or the title bar. The ribbon is made up of tabs, which are made up of groups categorizing related commands. Some of the group have a dialog box launcher. This dialog box launcher opens a dialog box containing additional commands that we can choose from. The function of a ribbon is to make it easier for you to easily and quickly locate most of the frequently used commands and options to perform a particular task. In this presentation, I'll focus on formulas and data tabs. This is mainly because the other tabs are exactly the same as the ones in Microsoft Word. If, for example, you are working with a large data set and you want to import it into Excel so that you can manipulate it and analyze it, then you will navigate to the data tab. Then a ribbon containing commands that are related to managing worksheet data and as well as connecting to external data sources will open. In this current version, the data tab has about nine groups groups, namely get and transform data, queries and connections, maths, data types, sort and filter, data tools, forecast, outline, and analysis. I will highlight some of the commands in each group. In the get and transform data, this is where you'll find commands or options for importing data from different sources into Excel. The Get Data drop-down button will give you options for importing the data into Excel from different sources. For example, you can import your data from a file, and from file, you can import data in different formats. For example, an Excel workbook, or you can import your data that is in a text or SVS format, and there are so many other options that you can choose from. For example, you can also import a data that is from a PDF file. And uh, the commands that are next to this get and get data drop down are just shortcuts to some of the options that I just explained. For example, this one is a shortcut for importing from SVS or a data that is in a text format. And here is another shortcut for importing from the written sources that you might have used. And also this one is a shortcut for importing from a web browser. When you are working with an Excel workbook that contains a query, the query will automatically be saved. When you later want to view or easily manage the query, 
you'll find the commands for doing so in the queries and connection group. The refresh all drop down button will allow you to update information in your current working workbook with information coming from an external workbook. Please know that most of the commands in this group, they are not activated because our worksheet does not contain any queries or data. In the maths group, you'll find shortcuts to the most frequently used mathematical commands. For example, calculating the sum, arranging your data from the smallest to the highest, or arranging your data from the highest to the smallest, and also superscripting your data, and also managing just managing your um, spreadsheet in general. For example, if you want to center the content of your cell, and so on. The data type group provides one with commands for connecting to an online data source. At the moment, there are two data types, namely stocks and geography. The connections to the additional so sources are live. This is especially true or relevant for the stocks data since share prices change constantly. In the sort and filter group, you'll find commands that will allow you to sort your data either in increasing order or in decreasing order. The filter command will allow you to analyze your data in ease. For example, the filtered data will only show for rows that meet a particular criteria. I will explain this in detail and I'll also give a practical example in the se second session of the presentations. In the data tools group, you'll find commands that will allow you to manage and clean your data. For example, here you'll find a command for deleting duplicate records from your worksheet. This group contains commands that will ensure you that uh, your data quality is good and is useful. The focus group contains commands that will allow you to make future linear projections. The outline and analysis groups will be explained with practical examples in the section that follows. I'll conclude part one of the presentation series by showing you how to customize your Microsoft Excel ribbon. You can personalize your ribbon by rearranging the tabs and commands according to your preferences. To do so, right click on an empty space in the tab bar, then double click on customize ribbon command then this window will open. The window is divided into three sections. The first section shows you general options of Excel. The middle part shows you the commands that you can add to your groups or tabs. The third part shows you the list of tabs in your tab bar. I'll firstly show you how to rearrange your tabs. To rearrange the position of your tabs, you right click, you click on the tab that you want to change the position. For example, formulas. If you want your tab bar to start with the formulas tab, you click on formulas, then you use the up arrow to move the formulas tab to the position you desire. We can now see that uh, the formulas tab is now the first tab in your tab bar. To save and see the changes that you made, you click on OK. 
we now see that the formulas tab is no longer next to the data tab, but it is next to a home tab. You can also reset all the changes that you made to reset your the changes that you've made. You'll just have to navigate and click on reset command and reset all customization. Click yes, then okay. Then you now notice that the tabs are now back to the original positions. I will now show you how to add your own custom tabs and groups. To add a new group or a new tab, you click on the command new tab, then immediately a new tab and a new group appears in the customize the ribbon list. So first thing to do is to rename your tabs and your group. To rename your tabs and your group, you just click on new tab, right click and navigate to rename then you type the name of your new tab. Let's say you want to name this tab stats. Then click OK. Then also rename your group. For example, if you want this group to contain all the commands for calculating summary statistics, you'll click, right click, navigate to rename and rename your group to perhaps summary. Click OK. Then the next step to do is to start populating your groups with commands. To do so, you'll have to click the commands that you want to add in your groups in the commands box. Unfortunately, you have to click them one by one. For example, if under your summary group, you want to add, let's say, a sum command, you click on the command that you want to add, you click on it, then click on it, then the command will be added under your desired group. Also, if some of the commands that you want do not appear here, you just have to here change the option to all commands. Now all the commands in Excel will appear instead of only popular commands appearing. Then you'll just scroll down and add the commands that you desire one by one. For example, here I see average. You can click on that and click add. Then it will add also the command for average and you just continue scrolling down, looking for more commands to add. Let's say here, another command says bottom 10 items. So I assume that this is a command for determining the bottom 10 items in your list. Then to save the changes that you have made, you click on OK. Then now you'll see on your tab bar, a new tab called statistic will show up. Also under this tab, we see the group summary that we created. So you can still continue adding more commands and more groups under this tab, following the same procedure that we followed. Thank you for Listening to part one of the presentation series, please be on the lookout for other parts of the presentations where in the second part, I'll be talking about data analysis and in the final part, we'll be performing data visualization with real life data as examples.